Good morning everybody, welcome to Kate Space. I'm Kate from Pixie K Designs. Welcome if you're new. Now today uh, I am working on my journal for the garden story, which is a collaboration with Rach and Bella Crafts. So yeah, if you don't know already, this is going on hashtag journal jigsaw. I'll link everything below. Now my day is on the 30th and I'm with Berry Mix Journals, Shiva, and our, our prompt is Radiant Ruffles. So yeah, that's gonna be fun. Now I chose Rustic and Grungy. I've made my journal and like I said, everything will be linked below. So go to the links in the description box if you wanna find out more about the collab. Now, I really wanted to use this uh, linen. I thought it really fitted in with the store, um, sort of the garden story situation. And I thought this with the blues and the sort of orangey yellows went with the kit. Now my problem is it's not grungy and I don't actually, I'm not gonna splash tea and make it grungy, but I thought I do need to do something about my pages. So this is the inside of the journal. I haven't done anything to make that any grungier. It's kind of a little bit grungy. We might do something, I'm not sure. But I wanted to sort of experiment a little bit and I thought I'd bring you along uh, with just grungying, grungying up my pages. So these are the pages I've chosen. Now I've got some bright white things in here. This is one of my eco uh, printed envelopes. Now that's, I feel like that's really nice and rustic and grungy. Obviously I'm gonna cover over this um, uh, printing here, but look how bright this is. Now that is actually printed on tea dyed paper, so um, but yeah, I've got a lot of white in here and I'm wondering whether I need to deal to that. This one's a little bit more grungy and I've printed this one on the back. I've put in some old, very old sort of music paper, some beautiful wallpaper and this probably needs, but look how bright this is. On the back, I've printed this foxed paper and I made a mistake and it, um, I printed it small on this because this is A3. Uh, and then I printed it again and I'm just going to leave it like that because I think it looks fine but I need to think about how am I going to grungy up these pages so the first thing obviously is tea and tea dyeing so I'm going to take my tea dye to this page this is very shiny it's out of a book but it's a really beautiful image and I'm just I've got some tea here so this is a cup of tea two tea bags and a little sprinkle, like the tiniest sprinkle of coffee. And I'm just gonna brush it on like this. So this works really well with book pages because it, the, ble the ink or anything won't bleed. Now I'm gonna dry it as I go. So I'll, I'll, I will um, skip this bit. So that's looking a little bit more, or well, a little less white and pristine. I'm gonna let it dry a little bit more because obviously it's not quite dry. Now, um, the kit pages, I have an inkjet printer. Now, I don't know if anyone has tried uh, tea dyeing inkjet papers, but it doesn't really work. Um, the ink runs and, um, yeah, it's not ideal. I've done it a little bit and I sometimes I like the effect. I'll show you one that I've done before I turn the camera on. So this is out of the uh, kit and basically it was on white A3 paper and I have added some tea dye to the back. So what's happened is the ink has bled through and so you've got these images and colors coming through on the side. I'm not a fan of that. I would have preferred that. Um, so I basically just tea dyed the back. I didn't tea dye the front. I like how the front looks now, but I don't really love this effect. And that's basically what happens when you wet um, 
coffee and tea dyed papers. Another thing that, um, that can work, and I'm going to give this a go. Let's see if we can get it to work. And my brush is wet now, and I don't really want my brush to be wet. I kind of want it more dry. Is you can take some gesso. So just a little bit of gesso, not too much. And just kind of dry brush, although my brush isn't dry because it's been in the water. <laughs> but you can dry brush some white sort of gesso around your edges just to um, create sort of that more rustic sort of look. So that's one thing you can do and also you can get the cream, a sort of a creamy colour and add that as well to the edges. I mean you can add it everywhere if you want. <laughs> Just to kind of stop it looking quite so pristine and new and clean. I don't know what this is going to end up looking like and I might not end up liking it but the thing is because I've printed it I can print it out again if I end up not liking these I'm just having a play to see how I can grunge up my pages so that's probably a bit much paint on that part there but you never know when you put it in the journal you might like it or maybe you can add a bit of white over the top to tone it back so yeah, have a play with your paints. I'm just using a real cheap gesso from the stationery store. I'm not using anything fancy and then just a cheap paint. Nothing flash. <laughs> so let's have a look what we can do with this side. I'm gonna try the same thing. I might regret it, but it's good to give these things a try. But let's just Try and dry brush some white paint over these bright images. Because they do look, the images do look rustic. I think they've made an effort, um, Rachel and um, Angela, to give us a few different looks. Some of them are really bright. And some of them are a bit more sort of rustic-y. And everyone has a different sort of, you know, view of what grungy is. I mean, grungy can be, you know, all the rust dying and just lots of really dark sort of brown. And, and I love that look, but I'm not very good at creating it. So anyway, I'm just going to do this painting on here. So Easter is approaching. We have family coming, which is going to be fun. My Two of my daughters, their partners, and my two granddaughters are coming. So it's going to be a fun, busy, noisy weekend here. And I'm looking forward to it. But I wanted to get some videos up before before they get here. So right, so I've added some paint. I don't know if it really makes any difference. <laughs> and I'm actually gonna go in with the cream as well, or whatever this color is. Very random. But like I said, it can all be printed out again if it turns out to be a disaster. So yeah, David and I spent the last two days in the garden and I can hardly walk. Every joint in my body is sore. Like that's what happens when you neglect your garden and then you go in and do an intense amount of work. But I have to say it looks so much better 
Okay, so I may be a little bit heavy here with the old cream, I think. Okay, so that's, so that's what the paint sort of looks like. The other thing we can go in with is obviously some inks. And um, I don't really know how dark I want to go, but I've got my vintage photo. So I'm just going to take some ink to the edges here a little bit. And just see if that... I like these sort of videos because I get some good feedback. Someone will suggest something that they've done to make something grungy and I find that really helpful. The other thing is a bit of crinkling to make things look a little less clean and new. I do really like this, this kit. I love this picture here. I love this background. So there we go, got a little bit of ink happening. And yellow is not really a, a, a color I use a lot, so it's been good to use a little bit of something different. So there we go, we've got a little bit of inking happening. I don't even know which way I had this folded, but anyway. So there we go, that's kind of grunged that up a little bit. I mean, that's still really bright, and but it's a little bit faded, and yeah, so that's one way of doing things. This is an onion skin dyed paper, which is quite yellow, and I wondered if I would ever get around to using it, but I actually really like that. The bright white, I don't know, I haven't tried tea staining uh, this braille paper so here we go let's give that a go and just make it more of a cream and see what happens see how it looks afterwards I actually quite like mixing all the whites and creams and different sort of neutral tones in, in my journals I didn't used to like including any white, but I do like it now. Right, I'll just dry this off. Here we go. I like how that looks. I like how that's um, taken the tea. So that is much grungier, isn't it? Than what we had before. So let's have a look what we've got here now. I'm going to have to decide about whether I'm going to keep that one or not. I don't think so. So we've got our magazine, or not our magazine, our book page. I mean, obviously this one is already um, sort of rustic and grungy already. And that does need nothing done to it. Uh, so we're getting kind of it looking a bit more. Now... This one, again, if I add tea to this, it will, it will bleed. I mean, we could add little drops. Let's see if we just add some drops like this to the side and then take the heat gun to it straight away. Yeah, we still get that ink coming through. And I don't really love that look. So maybe we try the paint again with this one. A bit of um, white gesso. My brush might be a bit wet. It's going to make the ink run anyway because I've got my brush a bit wet so 
so yeah there's some more if you go in with just a little bit you can always add more it's harder to take away as you saw in my other I love this image here that's one of my favorites um, so I'm going to use that again somehow I'm pretty sure probably as a tag or and this one here I love too And I think, <coughs> oh, excuse me, I think I'll try the ink again. How about we try <clears throat> maybe not something not so dark this time. I've got my Distress Ink. This is Antique Linen. For some reason, this has just dried out quite badly, but it still does actually add. And I'm going to kind of come in like that. see what we achieve with that now, I don't mind if it lifts it up a bit like that because I want it to be a little bit So this one's much more subtle because my ink pad's quite dry. And on this side we've got a bit of um, where the tea has come through here. We've got the ink coming through. with me being a little bit rough I've torn it so another cool thing to do is obviously some old sellotape now I've got some here I click I get click the old sellotape but often the yellowness of the old sellotape is the paper that's behind it so this has got some alcohol ink on it I'm just gonna tear a little bit off grab my glue and where did I rip it here and add some art glitter glue to it or not this used to have a little metal um, a little metal thing dispenser whatever you call it and I managed to push that right into the bottle because I'd left it without the lid on overnight and when I pushed the pin in to unblock it <laughs> it pushed the thing right in so there you go there's a little bit of sellotape there and then we can fold it over to this side Oh, that's not even where the tear is. Oh, well. <laughs> Doesn't matter. And so that adds sort of a grungy look as well, having a little bit of sellotape um, there. And even having a tear on your page can add a bit of grunge to it. I'm just going to add a little bit of paint to this one. Let's see what that looks like. The 
it's fun anyway, even if you don't like the outcome. It's good fun experimenting and like, you know, I get it, sometimes get a bit precious about the stuff I've printed out. I mean, this is only on, this is just on a photocopy of paper, so it's not even on my expensive paper. So again, like we said, we can print them out again, can't we? So it's, it's all good. So I think this actually has had a tea dye, this one here, um, but it's just lightly tea dyed. And same with this one. And then we've got another print here, which is just on photocopy paper. This one here is the one that I feel like oops, is super bright. And I'm not really sure. I mean, I love it. I think this is one of Angela's. I love the watercolour kind of theme to it. But I'm not sure whether it's going to really fit in my journal because it's so bright. And whether I might need to go back and print this on some tea dyed paper as well. Which I can do. Of course. Oh dear, that was a mistake. Okay, so that's really not what I wanted to do, but anyway. You get the gist with the paint. <laughs> it was meant to be a lot more dry. It's because my brush isn't dry. It's my own fault for not it's what, you know, having using a wet brush. Um, so there we go there's some ideas for grunging up papers if you've already printed them out and, you, and they look and you wanted to go for a more grungy look then sometimes just taking paint to it can do the trick but I may have just gone a little overboard there but that's okay and again with this one I know I haven't finished it but I'm just aware that it might be getting a bit boring for you um, a bit of ink around the edges And obviously this fox paper um, is fine as it is so yeah so I mean that does make it look a lot more grungy already the other things you things we can think about apart from the old cellar tape is uh, some rusty things that we can add when we're decorating so things like um, we've got I've got some rusty pins here that I will probably probably use at some point and rusty paper clips these ones are really these ones probably got left in a little bit long and the rust they're very rusty but that's kind of what we're after I guess what else have I got oh yes and some rusty sort of tarnished safety pins as well so those are all things that can be added to the journal to make it to create this rustic sort of look now I think I may not use this piece of paper or I may use it in a different way I don't know if I like this some people might actually like that I mean in some it's kind of cool I guess you can see the birds coming through but anyway that's just something so these, yeah, these are my pages. This is what I'm working on. I'm just going to finalise those and then I'm going to stitch them into this cover. Um, I'm thinking about whether I do my ruffles before or after I stitch them in. So now I need to go and look for some, some fabrics and things that aren't too uh, bright and shabby, but which are rustic and grungy. 
so yeah the prompt radiant ruffles probably isn't going to be great because we don't want them to be radiant we want them to be rustic but yeah i'm enjoying this process i hope you're um you've had the chance to look at the videos and maybe joining in and getting on with uh, perhaps making a journal so but if you follow the videos you'll have um gained a whole lot of ideas to put into your journal and it's perfect if you're coming into spring and even like a mother's day uh journal this would make a lovely mother's day journal i think so yeah my cover's not rustic and grungy and i'm not planning on doing anything too much to that to make it that to change that because I don't want to risk ruining these beautiful linens that I've saved for this um, to make a cover. Yeah, so that's what I'm going to continue doing. I might incorporate this one somehow. I may try tea dyeing that and see how that turns out. Thanks so much for watching. Just a little quick video today and I'll be back soon with another video. Obviously on the 30th I'll have my, uh, my collaboration video. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you again soon. Bye.